Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Justin Bellamy. At the age of 14, he had the idea of the Vegan Cruise, which is now, I believe, going to be its 19th year in a row sailing. And he's here to answer all your questions about it, about the food, about the ports, about the discounts. And welcome him to the show. Hi, Justin. Always nice to see you. Thanks, AJ. That was a nice introduction, although not 100% accurate. Um, thank you. <laughs> which, which part wasn't accurate, that you were 14 or... Well, it wasn't, it neither was it my idea, but um, it was actually the idea of the founder, Sandy Pucal, um, who had been a longtime business partner of my father, John Bellamy, and they uh, worked together um, from idea through launch back in 2003 and 2004 to start the Holistic Holiday at Sea Cruise, um, which initially was kind of focused on macrobiotics. Um, and it's kind of grown and grown and expanded into a whole lot, you know, host of different focus areas of spirituality, movement, and the broader plant-based and vegan um, food and lifestyle. Uh, as that, as those movements have kind of grown alongside the cruise over the last twenty years. Wow. Well, but but wasn't it your idea to call it vegan instead of uh, a macrobiotic? Well, I, I was definitely on the on the side on the camp of let's make it more mainstream, let's make it broader. You'll reach more people. Um, and you know, there was I think a little bit of hesitation about calling it a vegan cruise. Um, you know, it was a period of time when before plant based kind of the term plant based was was popularized to kind of describe the broader movement uh, where veganism was. Kind of, I think, seen by some um, as kind of more of an extreme activist animal rights type of label. Um, now it's that label has broadened to include a wider range of lifestyles and choices. Um, and then there's been alternative terms like plant based that's come up that have come along that are, you know, I think people feel maybe are more inclusive of diet, focus more on diet than on on uh, animals in the environment. So we we consider we are we are we consider ourselves a plant based event a vegan event, a macrobiotic friendly event, uh, um, an SOS free, relatively friendly event. You know, we have different options as far as, um, as the different uh, menu, the menu itself, like there's some level of um, choice with, with how you choose to, you know, navigate the food on, on board. Right. So, but I was correct that this next year, 2024 is the 19th sale. I think so. Yeah, I, I was counting it up the other day when putting that letter that you sent out together. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, it was 2004 was the first one. And then we've had the last two years, there was two years when it didn't sail. So I'm pretty sure that adds up to 19. 19 wow. cruises. How have you seen the cruise grow and change? And how many did you actually take yourself? Uh, I think I was on, let's see, 15? 15 years in a row, I believe. Oh my gosh. So I was on the second year and then every year after that until 2019. And then I didn't go in 2020 because I had a newborn at home. And then I didn't go last year, um, but I went every year other than that. So yeah, so 2005 until 2019 for 15 cruises in a row. Um, yeah, and over that time, I think it grew from roughly like 600 people to around 2,100 guests. So obviously it's a much larger event. That means a bigger ship. Um, it means more speakers, you know, and, and, um, and a lot of other changes too, you know, but those are the, some of the big ones, but you know, the one thing that's, that's changed, I think starting around 2011, um, we started bringing on social media influencers, like, you know, people, you know, people who've connected us together, like Robert Cheek and others in the movement, you know, real recently folks like Ocean Robbins, um, and, and those folks tend to have a slightly younger audience. So we've, we've expanded into younger audiences. There's definitely um, more younger people than there were before. Um, and that's one change that we've noticed, um, you know, especially in the last, uh, say, like 10 years or so. Wow, that's neat. How have the numbers grown? How, didn't you start with just about 100 when you first started? I think the first year, the numbers were in the low 400s, um, if I remember correctly, uh, somewhere in the four to 500 range. And then each year after that, it grew by about 100 to 200 people until it reached, um, 
I think it plateaued for a few years around 1500 and then it started growing again up until when it sort of reached the point where um, a natural peak of, of 2100, which is roughly half of these uh, these larger cruise ships. Um, it's, it's a big leap to go to doing a whole ship. So half felt, you know, felt like a good size event, a manageable size of an event. So the last like five years before COVID, it was around 2100. And then uh, now the ship, the rules of the ships have changed a little bit. The, the, the ship formats have changed. So actually the event is going to be slightly smaller next year. And so we therefore expect it might sell out faster because the interest and demand is better, higher than it ever has been. Um, so we expect it to sell out pretty quickly. Wait, was is so is, is it the same ship or a different ship? It's a new ship. It's an entirely new ship. Um, it's actually a literally a new newer ship. Like it's only a few years old or maybe a year old. Um, it takes a couple of years to build a ship, but it's only been sailing uh, with passengers for I think less than a year. Um, maybe only a couple of sailings. I think it's the first season. Uh, so our our cruise is typically toward the end of the Caribbean cruising season. Uh, which is, you know, mostly the winter time. So since it's we're in the late winter, that's are usually at the tail end of a cruising season for the cruise lines. So um, is it the same company, the same ship, MSC Divina? It's not the Divina, it's the MSC Seascape, which is like I said, this new ship. Um, we have a lot of information about the ship on this on the website. Uh, we're going to be putting out a new blog in the next few days, kind of focused on the ship as well on the website. So, yeah, you can definitely go to the site and check it out. Um, you can put your link to your landing page in the chat or wherever you want in the in the streams. And from there, people will be able to navigate to the ship page, learn more about it. The ship page on the site is beautiful. It has some amazing photo, photo, photographs of the ship. It's It's the largest ship we've ever been on. You know, when we started out 2004, 2005, we were on ships, I think, that had between two and 3,000 passengers. And I think this ship has close to 5,000 total capacity. Wow, that is something. That is really something. I'm going to look for some questions in the chat, but we also had some questions sent in. But the first thing is, let's just address the issue that people that criticize cruises. Dr. Doug Lyle talked about how they really don't have the same environmental impact and animal rights impact that people are claiming they have. So what do you say to that? Well, I'm not personally necessarily an expert on the subject matter, but this is a question we get regularly. It's a question we regularly support our partners on. Um, and some of the quick answers are, um, if you compare you know, moving 2,000 people from the US through four or five different Caribbean ports of call, if you compare if, if they all flew on airplanes and flew from the United States or to Puerto Rico, to the Dominican Republic, to the Bahamas, the amount of pollution and, and fossil fuels used would be exponentially more to move that many people by air. Um, so you have to compare, you know, what each type of travel has a different type of impact. Um, so compared to flight, there's a lot less pollution and environmental uh, and, and, and fossil fuel use. Um, some people will, will ask about the um, direct animal impacts. You know, there are some direct animal impacts of airplanes and, air, and, and airports um, as there are with ship ports. And I think, uh, I'm not an expert on this, but I think that there are some, in certain parts of the world, the ships themselves have impacts on the animals that live in the port, you know, that are swimming in the water in the port. Um, but I think it's relatively comparable to, you know, the birds and the other animals that are around airports. and. Um, so I don't, you know, it's just sort of, if you want to travel at all, you're going to have to choose a mode of transportation that's going to have some impact. Even driving around across the country has an impact. So that's one answer. Um, the ship itself um, is better than average on environmental, um, you know, scoring. That these, these things are scored. They, they are um, assessed by various institutions, determine how environmentally friendly they are. And they, this ship is a newer ship. The, new, the newer ships are definitely cleaner um, in terms of how they handle waste and food and um, <clears throat> things like that. So they've, you know, they've evolved to be more uh, eco-friendly. I watched a, a documentary a few years ago that MSC put out, and a lot of it talked about the different things that the ship does to preserve its wastewater and to boil some of that off so that it's not, you know, um, going into the ocean and transporting that to the port so that it can be taken off the ship and things like that. So I'm not, like I said, not an expert on those 
logistical or operational details of how the ship works. Um, but we do know that it's a kind of above average. MSC has an above average rating. The, sh the ships we choose intentionally, we choose their eco most eco-friendly vessels for the reason that you described, because our, our audience is going to be more sensitive than the average cruiser. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about the discount you're offering now. So right now we are in the early bird period. So that means that we're, you know, this, this ticket sale just went, tickets just went on sale about two weeks ago. Uh, so we're in the very the first of several different price periods. So we'll have the early bird period, which will end Monday, September 25th, which is only, you know, about two weeks away. And then um, after that, there'll, there'll be a fall, a fall price period and then a winter price period and then the final price. Um, so you will get the best price if you book before September 25th. The current discounts range from $200 to $300 off the full price, depending on which kind of cabin you choose. Um, and then in addition to that, if people book through your um, your promotion, AJ, um, if they mention you, Chef AJ, preferably just your, your full name in the form when they, when they sign up, um, they won't get an additional discount, but they will get an additional $50 onboard credit. This is for new guests. The credit portion is for new guests. Anyone can, can unlock the discount that's currently available, but new guests would also receive a $50 credit um, which would also unlock a donation uh, to you as well, you know, a commission to support your work. So they'll be benefiting you. They'll be benefiting themselves if they choose to book through either your email you sent out or the link you put in the chat or description of this video. That's fantastic. There's a question if I'm going to be on the ship. No, <laughs> I've done it many times and it's wonderful, but I'm, I'm more of a land person than a sea person, you know? Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be on there either. Uh, I may, I'm, I'm not, I haven't fully made up my mind, but I have a lot of work travel around that time that are, you know, to conferences that I'll be speaking at for, for my main, my main work. So this is a, this, this business is, um, like I said earlier, my father was the co-founder, but he was, uh, it was really Sandy's idea. And so Sandy, you know, approached my father about helping him launch it, kind of run the operations. My dad helped with the sponsorships, the, the uh, food, um, logistics, the, webs, the, the the marketing. I took over the digital marketing in the second or third year and have done it ever since. Um, but then he, my father retired a, a few years back. Um, so I, I continue to do the, help lead the marketing. I have a marketing agency now. And this was actually my first real marketing project it was a holistic holiday when I was actually an undergrad. So not quite 14, but I was in my, my early 20s. <laughs> Wow, that's incredible. Well, speaking of the food, Susan wrote in a question in advance knowing you were going to be on and asks, will your meal organizers be able to offer gluten-free and SOS, sugar oil, salt-free options? I went on the cruise last year and I was very disappointed with the sit-down meals. Even after requesting oil-free as listed on the menu, there was still oil in the dish. There were no oil-free options in the buffet except for salads. The food was overly salted. Can't the food be prepared salt-free too and let the guests add salt? salt to the at the table well i think those are some of those questions would be probably better directed to the cruise customer service because i don't want to speak about things i don't know um i do know that you know in, in mass production of of food at the scale you have to understand there we're cooking for 1500 people at once um we're bringing the host of holiday is bringing i think 20 or 25 chefs who've, you know, only cook on a cruise ship one, one week out of the year or they've never done it before. So they're integrating with a staff of several hundred who work on the ship, you know, for the whole year. So a lot of learning, there's a huge learning curve for everyone to cook a wholly different menu for one week than compared to what they cook the rest of the year. The rest of the year, they basically cook the same menu. They know how to cook everything on their menu. They're cooking an entirely different menu for us. Um, so that's a lot to do. So the amount of customization that's possible in that scenario is, is somewhat limited. I um, mean, then cooking with salt is, I think, kind of somewhat necessary for preservation and like quality control. Um, but as far as gluten free and and, and low oil, um, that's, I think, a little bit easier to accomplish. Um, and we have so many people who request those things that I think um, there's greater effort made to accommodate specifically low oil and gluten free. Um, but I would say defer that to the cuisine page of the website and contacting the cruise um, organizers to, to get more direct answers on, on those questions. 
you know, it's interesting that you talked about producing food on a scale because I just got back from the Plantrician Conference. Have you ever been there? I haven't. It's a pretty good conference, I would say, one of the best, if not the best I've been to. And I hung out with the chefs a lot just because I mean, I'm not a doctor. Their lectures were interesting, but you know, I, I was just so intrigued by what they were able to accomplish SOS free. They're basically cooking three meals a day for 500 people at a very low budget. And you know, it, to me, what they did was incredible. So I can't imagine like doing it for four times as many people. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Like, I mean, cause I can't, I mean, I was watching them and it would just, the amount of prep that just goes into just even making oatmeal for 500 people, for example. I mean, it, it just, it, they, it was incredible just to see how it's really done on that scale. Like if I'm having eight people for dinner, I'm like, it's hard. And can you imagine like 500 or 2000? So yeah, I, I understand um, it is hard for people that eat a very, very specific way when it's, that when they have that many people to serve because they, they can't, they can't be short order cooks for everyone. Yeah. The, the, I only went into the kitchen one time. One of the previous ships had a period of like a kind of a ship tour night where you could like walk through different parts that you normally can't go into. And I walked through the kitchen and I'll be honest, it was very claustrophobic and very tight down there. And it was all stainless steel. It was very intense. Somebody who's a little bit, um, sensitive to stimulation it was one of the most overstimulating experiences of my life so i can't imagine you know this the hustle and bustle down there during the day when they're cooking um the heat the the steam all the things it's it's just it's it's a lot for the people who have to, to that's their that's their job both the people who do it year-round and the, and the crew that we bring on board one week we bring a crew a, a week ahead so they can get acclimated they can get organized they can kind of get the stock of, 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 of items organized so that they could find everything they need on the very first day when the people come on board and are ready to eat their first meal um, as they board the first the first day of the cruise. So, yeah, I mean, the cuisine has evolved a lot. I, I, I've i thought it's, you know, it's gotten a lot better um, in the last 10 years, and I've been impressed with it almost every time I've been. So I think that some people have to, I would say, I understand that some people have to eat a certain way. Uh, for their diet, for their 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 healing, we do what we can to accommodate. But it's also a vacation, and it's something. The quality of the vegan food on this cruise, I think, is a lot better than the vegan or vegetarian options on any sort of traditional resort or mo most traditional resorts and other cruises. So it's a step up from from what you get, what you could get if you went on a regular cruise or went into a regular resort. Um, and so I think that you know that's. That's a big, you know, a big part of the um, putting this on is creating that quality of food that people can have for the whole week. Yeah. And then the thing is, is it, it, I would say if somebody's going just for the food, there's other experiences you could have. What is really cool about the cruise is the, the people that you're going to meet. And then, of course, the lectures and, and can you can get if you're a medical uh, professional, you can get CMEs, can't you? Yeah, and I, I think we, I need to check on that as well. Um I know that for a long time, they partnered with the University of Miami to provide that program. And I'm not sure, um, I think they found a new provider, but I'll have to check on that and get back to you. Um, we can put that in the follow-up me uh, message, but um, historically there has been CME credits available. And uh, just the content quality, I mean, I'll, I'll go through some of the new speakers that we have or the returning ones right now. Um, your friend, Brittany Giroudi, who I know you've worked with a number of things is coming for the first time, um, as is uh, Janae Claiborne of sweet potato soul. So we have a couple of new cooking teachers that are first time guests. Um, we have a couple of new kind of cancer experts like uh, Nathan Crane is coming. And then um, we have uh, some big name returners who weren't there last year. Dr. Neil Barnard and Dr. T. Colin Campbell are back again. They're regulars for a long time, but they weren't able to make it last year. So that's, that's a, those are, you know, obviously two headline names joining Dr. Michael Greger, who's was here last year and has been consistently for for a while, uh, so big time plant based doctors, um, some new influencers, and some you know other folks. Uh, Potion Robbins is back for the second year in a row. It's his, his second cruise. Um, Dr. Dean and Aisha Sherzai are back again. Um, the two Dr. Sherzais they're they're coming for the second time. So yeah, we have a really solid lineup. Um, between 30 and 40 plant-based teachers teaching roughly 100 classes over the course of the seven days. Um, 
every morning there's there's about six or seven fitness and movement options uh, ranging from yoga to tai chi to other other modalities and then lectures all day long parties in the evening the parties uh have entertainment they have vegan vegan food um, so there's just something to do pretty much from sunrise to past sunset every day and then the days we have port um, we're visiting ports there's a little bit less going on on board so you can feel like you can get off without missing too much and explore the Caribbean during the winter time when it's kind of cold in parts of the U.S. It's usually really nice uh, in these islands as well. Yeah, I think the only thing that's difficult about the cruise is there's so many choices each time, you know, to, to be able to choose which lecture you want to go to. Yeah, that is a challenge, um, but they also record most of them and they have them for sale in the bookstore. There's a cruise ship. We kind of build our own bookstore on board that has a lot of the, the content from the speakers as well as some products you can buy and then the lecture recordings as well. Yeah. Let's check if there's any more questions in the chat. People come with their whole families, don't they, often? Yeah, I mean, we don't see a lot of... of of newborns and infants, um, but we do, we have seen families of with up to like four or five kids of uh, eight, ranging in age from, you know, three or four up to teenagers. And we also see a lot of young adults traveling with their parents, um, a lot of mother daughters, a lot of couples with the, with one of their parents. Um, some people turn into a whole family reunion. I mean, for years, uh, the T. Colin Campbell and his, his family have come kind of as many as 10 or 12 of them or more uh, have come together, make it kind of a family reunion of sorts on board. I remember Denise Borchard used to come with her family every year. Yeah, yeah, they, they uh, I think they were they were on board last year. I, I just remember seeing some photos of their their kids. You know, I, I years ago, I think about 10 years ago, um, I did a talent show with their older son when he was about eight. I think he's in his 20s now. <laughs> Yep. Yep. Kane is, is, is they're all, yeah, I think Donovan just turned 18 actually. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. So yeah. you get to see people, if you go along enough, you get to see people grow up. I remember early in the early years, there was a doctor from New York who had, I think like five or six daughters and they all looked similar, but they were different ages. So they would do like, they would play the violin at the talent show. And um, I got to see them grow up and and go off to school and college uh, as that as the cruise evolved over the years. They were on their very, very, very early years. I think the second cruise I'm, I'm ever meeting them, the second year it sailed in 20, 2004 or five. Nice. Has anything changed since COVID that are, that people should know about either restriction wise or just that might help them make a decision that it's safe? Um, you know, I, I think everyone has to make their own choices about travel this time, you know, with this current current kind of iterations of COVID that are happening. Um, I actually I'm not up on the, the this year's latest rules and regulations. I was pretty refreshed on them last year mm -hmm. and they changed. I mean, throughout the marketing season of, of the cruise last year, the rules and regulations changed a few different times. So I would encourage people just to check the website, talk to their doctor if they need to do that. Um, kind of make their decision um, based on their personal preferences and and things of that nature. I don't want to give people that kind of medical advice. Is there any kind of trip insurance that people can get if they're worried? It's strongly encouraged. The, uh, I would strongly, strongly encourage everyone to get trip insurance. It's reasonably priced and um, it, it covers, you know, uh, a good number of reasons why you wouldn't be able to travel it can give you can give you a, basically a, my understanding is that you can get coverage for a, basically a full refund mm -hmm. um, because the event is so expensive to put on and, and produce. Um, you know, we have to, to provide, um, you know, more increasing guarantees and that only a, the, the amount of money people can get as a refund from the from the event itself go down as we get closer to the event. So the only way to get full protection is to buy travel insurance. So back when, even before COVID, when my mom was help handling the travel agency work, she would strongly encourage people to, to buy the travel insurance. And I know so many stories from her that of people who were really grateful that they had it. So I would say it's almost, I'm personally, I would consider it, you know, a necessity for this kind of travel these days. I don't blame you. 
makes sense. Has it gotten any easier on the ship to check email? Because I remember when I went, it was like so expensive. Yeah, it has gotten a lot easier because the technology has gotten better. You know, I haven't even been, the, you know, it's been three or four years since I, I went. Last time I went, there was mobile hotspots all over the ship in your room. Um, it was relatively inexpensive. Uh, it really was priced based on how much bandwidth you use. So if you were doing just email, the bandwidth amount of, the amount of bandwidth to send text emails is extremely low. So you could run up a bill if you were watching videos in your on your on YouTube or you know using your 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 so, your social media apps and watching tons of video, you would use more bandwidth and you'd be paying by the bandwidth you were using. Um, but if you were just doing email, it's fast, it's cheap, it's easy. Um, I, you know, I, I run several businesses and I can never take the whole week off, um, you know, not, not check my work email. And, th and that goes all the way back to say like 2012, 13, back then I had to go to the computer lab and pay by the minute. Um, and it was still, you know, have to do that every day. I run up a couple hundred dollars of bill of internet usage throughout the week. The last time I went, it was negligible and much, much more convenient. You know, I could put my phone on the on the on the Wi-Fi, um, I could put my computer. I could work from the, the lounges or the deck, you know, looking out into the ocean, and uh, it was yeah much 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 easier than that used to. It's kind of gone through about three different technology upgrades, and I imagine this newer ship may even be more advanced than anything I've, I've experienced because I haven't been on this class of ship before. You know, it'd be cool if I did come. If I could do, could you imagine doing my live show from the the cruise? Yeah, I, I think you could definitely record and upload shows from there. I don't know about live streaming, but you could probably do recordings and, and send them back home and have someone put them up for you. That would definitely work. That's so interesting. So what else do you do other than help with the cruise do like to promote healthy living? Well, um, right now, the cruise is our, is our main vegan client. We are in discussions with a few others. I just actually heard today from... Nelson Campbell, who you might know, um, of course. about sort of helping him with some of his new projects. Um, we've helped him in the past with some of his projects. Uh, but we, we are a, you know, I, won't, I won't spend too much time and I want to focus on the cruise, but I own a, a digital marketing agency with about 10 employees. We have about 20, 20 to 25 projects and they're in kind of health and wellness, um, uh, sustainable travel, and um, social impact and nonprofits. So this kind of project kind of overlaps two of our focus areas, travel and health. Uh, we do more traditional travel work as well, like destinations. We live in Western North Carolina, which is a popular place to visit. So we work with some of the small towns and some of the attractions around here. We work with some national nonprofits and recycling and in um, different forms of, of conservation. Uh, and, and, other, and other topics. Um, and then we also own a marketing school, which you know, Sarah, my business partner, Sarah, uh, she runs our marketing school. And then we also own a travel guide website for this area of the country, Western North Carolina. So we have three businesses with a total of almost 20 employees. That's amazing. And you're not very old, as far as I know. Are most of your employees interested in health or vegan themselves? We have a few vegan employees and definitely more if you count vegetarian employees, but I'm personally vegan. Um, but yeah, you know, I think in general, we we have a healthy lifestyles, but not all vegan. That's very, very cool. Has it hurt you at all? I don't, I don't know if that's the right word because, but you know, when you started out and for many years, you were the only game in town when it came to vegan cruises. And I keep seeing there's at least three that I know of that have popped up since. Well, I mean, I think each one's pretty different. I would say ours is the large one with the biggest lineup of teachers and um, on the largest ship, as far as I know. So it's the most traditional cruise experience. It's definitely the most robust um, total, total uh, lecture experience as far as the amount of content, the quality of the content. Um, some of the others, I know there are some that are smaller, more intimate and higher priced. Uh, others that might be a smaller group on a big ship that might, you know, get not have as much of a feel of a big conference. Our our event, I'd say, feels like if you've been on the cruise a bunch of times, it feels like a family reunion because you know everybody and you kind of have a week where you're not using your technology very much. And you connect on a deep level. It's also like going to an educational retreat where there's content around the clock. And you can also, one unusual thing about going to this conference compared to like 
going to a regular conference is the most of the speakers are kind of part of the group. You know, they're staying on board and they're mingling with the guests. We we allow people to change seats at dinner so you can mix it up. So you're not stuck with the same group every night. Um, that means you can potentially sit with like Colin Campbell at dinner or or Neil Bernard and, and just have a casual conversation. Uh, you can also find them at the parties and, and connect personally, which is unique. Um, so yeah, I think it has this big, bigger, more connected feel than I think most other conferences uh, because it's also seven days in a row, night, you know, morning to evening. You can go to a veg fest and like run into a bunch of people that you know, but you don't get to like go and go swimming with them or get off the boat and have a whole day where your phone doesn't work and you get to spend like really get a real connection experience. So I think that's unique about it is like, it's a true vacation. It's a true educational experience. And if you've been more than once, it can become a community that you know. Yeah. And people meet their spouses on it like Robert Cheek. And me. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. You too. This is, it really is the love boat. Yeah. There, uh, one of the most famous love boat stories was uh, Melissa Carpell, who used to be the PR manager at PETA. Her younger sister met her husband back in one of the early years. I remember meeting both of them around the time that they met. Uh, he was coming with his mom from England. She was coming with her her parents from California, I think. And they met like early on the cruise. They hit it off and they formed a long distance relationship and then they, they got married. A few years later, her, their older sister, uh, Melissa, kind of had the same experience um, and wrote an article about it. I think it was on Veg News or Vegan uh, Vegan Fitness, one of those magazines, um, covering kind of calling it the vegan love boat. And uh, there was a few others. There's also been people who've chosen to do kind of elopement style weddings on board and uh, things like that. So it's definitely an uh, opportunity if that's what you're looking for. You have like certain times that are like more single mixers, don't you? Yeah, they're, they're, um, I'm not sure what the current programming looks like, but years ago there were there was usually like a singles um, mixer at, a, at a, a bar on board one of the first few nights. Um, they used to have some tables reserved for singles as well. I'm not sure if they're still doing that or not. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely uh, a little bit of programming around. Not a lot, not an overkill, but just a tiny bit. Thanks. Here's a question. For somebody who's never been on a cruise, asks Susanna, what would a typical day on the holistic holiday at sea look like? Okay, well, there's, you know, the days you get on and off are different because of just logistics. You know, you got to arrive at the port, you know, kind of go through kind of slightly longer, but similar to like getting on, getting through the airport. airport. You got to, you know, put your luggage in, get your luggage through security, get your tickets, walk through a queue and get on board. And then average day, they kind of break into two different types of days. There's days when the ship is docked or docking at a port. And there are days when you're at sea the whole day. So when you're at sea the whole day, the boat is slowly making its way through the ocean. Usually the weather is pretty good in the Caribbean. So it's like breezy and sunny and warm, usually in the 80s or high 70s. And you kind of can choose whether you want to do the cruise experience or the educational experience. So the educational experience is like there's a theater and, and several um, lecture rooms with simultaneous 60 to 90 minute long talks that there's four or five going on at any given time. And you can you know go to one and sit through the whole thing. You can go to one and decide you want to go to a different one and switch and walk to the next one and you can basically sit in classroom for most of the day, or you can mix that up with going and sit, you know, sitting by the pool or going to the spa or going to the gym and working out or going and running around a track um, on top of the ship. You can kind of go back and forth between those things as much as you want throughout the day. And that then there's, you know, obviously breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, breakfast and lunch, there's a buffet option. Dinner, there's just a sit-down dinner. After dinner, there's also some food available near the buffet as well. Um, and then there's parties at night and those parties are usually have some live music, some, some drinks, um, and then some food that's themed. So there's like, sometimes there's a like cookies and cookies and vegan milk, um, party. There's vegan pizza parties. There's been like vegan chips and guac kind of, you know, just regular hors d'oeuvres, sushi rolls, like depending on each party has a different theme and different options. Um, there's usually an ice cream 
social or two throughout the week. Each of these are sponsored by, by food brands that provide most of the food. And um, there's you know people queuing up to get the food and then they're mingling and dancing and hanging out at night after it gotten dark. So you're at the top of the ship, it's dark. There's like you know, lots of lights on the ship so you can see fine. And that's sort of the day. And then and I'll, I didn't mention there's like, you know, get up at seven and usually I think there's like four or five to six different options in the morning before breakfast or concurrently with the beginning of breakfast to get moving and get outside um, and get some movement. So that's an average day. And when we're, we're in the port, um, usually most of the ports have a bunch of, of, of excursions you can book through the ship. We um, usually pick some that are vegan friendly and then sort of promote those because there are certainly some that aren't vegan friendly. You know, there are some that would be considered not animal rights friendly <clears throat> for a variety of reasons. Um, so we don't usually promote those through our, our own efforts, but people can choose whatever they want. They can choose the ones we choose to promote or, or anyone the ship is offering. Some of those are historic tours. Some of those are, you know, adventure type of experiences. Some of them are just access to snorkeling or access to a beach. Um, some of them mix and match those things together to create longer excursions. And at almost every port, you can kind of do your own thing. Some of them, you can just walk off the ship and walk to a beach. Others require a little taxi cab or bus ride uh, or you can choose where you want to go and uh, you if you plan your way ahead of time you can sort of find the vegan restaurants in these places you can find the vegan friendly activities online by searching you know TripAdvisor or, or kind of getting uh, getting acquainted with them before you get there and kind of plan out your days or you can stay on the ship you don't have to get off the ship is less crowded when people get off so the onboard experience is more calm there's less educational content because we don't want people to feel like they're missing out. So there's sometimes there's gaps where we just say day off, you know, afternoon off, go enjoy yourself. And then sometimes there's just a limited amount of programming for people to choose to stay behind. Some people don't want to get off. Some people don't want to deal with it. So we will just rather have, you know, the real relaxation of a slower day on board. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. It's, it's kind of like a big hotel. I mean, think about it like a big uh, all-inclusive resort that's moving in the water. Thank you. So Mary Beth, who's watching live, says, so would love, love, love this cruise. Well, register before the 25th and you can save a few hundred dollars. Mention my name, you get a $50 onboard credit to use on the ship. Uh, that Valerie says, I just got here. Sorry if it's been asked. Are the presenters that are depicted actually going to be on the cruise or will it be virtual educational presenters? No, anyone who's listed on the presenters page is confirmed. There's a slight chance that someone might cancel. We we're going to add a few more. But um, last year, I think we only had like one person cancel. And then we, you know, we replaced them with people. We have a waiting list of people who want to speak. Uh, we actually get a lot of inbound requests to speak on board. Um, so yeah, there, we're also, we're still like waiting for introductions to a few, a few speakers, um, as well that we want to invite to fill out the, the rest of the schedule, but no, every single lecture is live. Um, very few of them have even have any pre-recorded material. It's mostly truly live presentations. Um, some of them have a little bit of video or something they might play, but they're there in person. Yeah. So there's no telecast there's no live stream component it's just the people speaking on stage or in front of a small group depending on the size of the room and the the popularity of the speaker nice thanks so uh where to go connie says i'm definitely looking for a vegan love of my life and friends well you'll have 2100 to choose from on the ship i, well, I can't promise they're all single but there'll be a lot of people i think it's gonna be more like 1500 to 1600 this year but that's still should be plenty <laughs> All it need, all she needs is one. <laughs> she says, uh, this looks off, awesome. Oh, I had a question from Debbie. Is there a formal night and what is the dress code for dinner time? Um, yeah, there is a formal night. I think when we used to do 10 day cruises, sometimes there might've been two formal nights some, sometimes. So the formal night, as you might imagine, um, our group is probably not as formal as the average European cruise group. Um, it's like the ship, these cruises, these cruise lines are European. So a lot of their, some of their portion of their regular guests are actually coming in from Europe to sail on the, in the Caribbean. Uh, but yeah, you might imagine that like a, a more holistic, mindful, um, 
group might not you know wear tuxes and fancy dresses but they some of them do so we have everything from the extreme black tux to and fancy dresses to people just choosing to kind of wear their nicest nicest button down shirt pants uh, are i think encouraged or not required for men at dinner time in the sit down um but it's pretty it's pretty casual i think our group is the is more casual than the average cruise group um but yeah i mean you're it, going to dinner is is like going to a fancy restaurant like the way that they played it the way that they set it up so kind of treat the dinners like like going to a fancy sit down dinner um and then the lunches and the breakfasts are more casual for sure you can come right from yoga class and your yoga pants and go straight to to breakfast go to a couple of lectures go to lunch and then go back and change for dinner yeah <clears throat> Let's see. Uh, where there's some. Oh, is there a cost to attend the cooking and yoga classes? Asks Debbie. Um, most of those. Well, all the. I think all the fitness classes are free. There, there might be a couple of like really significant guided meditation type experiences that might be a little bit of an extra fee. But the majority of the of all the content is free, um, or included. I mean, um, there are a couple of cooking classes that are an extra fee. So there are, there are usually three cooking instructors and they each do two to three free classes and one that's an extra fee. The extra fee classes are smaller. They're limited to like 30 to 50 people, I think. And they're a little bit more intimate. Um, and then the bigger cooking classes are more like a lecture hall with a couple hundred people. And so the in the bigger ones, the chef is just kind of talking about the process and then they're pre-preparing um, those samples in the kitchen and bringing them out to people to try. So it's more like a kind of like watching a cooking show on television um, would be for the. Um, yeah, the it's bigger. like a it's you, like a you, boot you, camp. You've, yeah, you've done both, that. right? You, you've taught both, right, AJ? Well, the thing is, when you do the the main class, it's free. There's like 400 people there, and that's that's a lot of fun. But the boot camp, it's more intimate, and they get, they can get involved in the process. So I did both. Um, yeah, the, the cooking class, the book, there are like three or four boot camps and then like six or eight, uh, six to eight free cooking classes. And then all the rest of the lectures and talks are are um, are included in the free in the, in the ticket price. And then there's optional um, private consultation. So a number of the doctors and movement instructors, body workers, sometimes like a chiropractic kind of person will be on board. There's a number of other like specialized kind of holistic wellness practitioners ranging from really advanced MDs down to, you know, new age and spiritual kind of um, modalities that you can book in your room or in a private room um, where you can get a treatment or a consult or you know, see a doctor, so to speak, to talk about a, your whatever condition you have, depending on the, there's a whole menu of options um, that you can book for private consults. And that's really pop, a pretty popular aspect of the cruise. I know. I never got out of my room. I was so busy. <laughs> Here's a fun question from Janice. Is there a percentage of guests who are non-vegan? Um, there are. Um, I think the most common scenario for non-vegan guests is a couple where one has got some sort of medical condition and they've, John, they've chosen to go plant-based purely you know, for healing whether that's they have cancer, they have heart disease, they have diabetes, they have uh, diabetes, they have a number of other things, one or more of those, those conditions or others that maybe you know, benefit from a plant-based diet and their doctor or, or some holistic practitioner has guided them toward the diet and they're coming to learn and get a deeper dive. And it's also an immersion, right? They eat this way for a week. They can sort of absorb all this content. They get motivation, inspiration. They hear success stories. There's a, there's a recovery panel where people talk about how they heal themselves from sometimes terminal diagnosis. And so they come away with resources, content, education, motivation. And a lot of times their partner comes along to support and they may, you know, in some cases that might be also convert the partner. In other cases, the partner, you know, will, will order off the regular menu and, and, uh, kind of do their, you know, do a purely uh, vacation cruise and not go to the content at all. And, it really depends on where the partner's at with their lifestyle and their commitment to change or or, or at least commitment to try, I'd say. Um, it's pretty unusual. I don't think it's very common that someone would choose a vegan cruise if 
one or both of the people in the in the, in the couple weren't seriously considering going to go vegan. So some people use it as like a, a kick, a jump start, a dump start program. And, and that that fact that like our our event has helped a lot of people either can commit to or convert to a vegan diet is one of the things we point to when we talk about the impact, right? There are not very many events that have impacted as many people into the vegan lifestyle than the host of quality at sea. So you have to balance that positive momentum that the event has created with the negative environmental impacts as minimal as minimal as we think that they are. Um, it's an event that has impacted somewhere close to 25,000 people. Now, some of those people are hardcore, you know, plant-based way before the cruise, and they're going for the vacation where they can eat everything on the menu. And a lot of people are going, I would say a good portion go because they 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 need to be they feel like they need to be vegan for their health and they need the education and the and the sort of motivation and a jump start. And it's it's perfect for that. You know, it's very ideal for that. Has anyone not on the cruise ever tried to horn in? Not not no not, I mean in a way, like in a good way, like to get that information. Yeah, I mean there there, there are certainly um people who who book the cruise who don't know what our event's happening, who happen to be vegan or vegetarian, and they find out when they get on board that this is happening and they're like, oh, I want to join. And there we I think there's a process where they can like buy a, an upgrade from our from our, our book, our like um, hospitality desk and get an official badge and become part of our group, even though they weren't signed up beforehand. I don't know how if that happened much in the last few years, but I do certainly remember that happening when the cruise was less well known. Um and then you know. I think there are probably occasionally situ situations where people try to sneak in, but we have door monitors at every door looking for your name, your, that we have branded name badges that show the logo of the event. And um, it's kind of like a conference in that way. You know, you have to have the the ticket to get in the door through the different events around the um, better part of our group. Makes sense. Let's see if there's any other questions. With the chat, sorry. Okay, um, Honeybee says there were two dress up nights on the cruise she was on in 2020, and it was a totally amazing experience. Someone's asking if people are allowed to bring service animals. I can't imagine a service animal having a very good time, honestly. I don't know what the current policies are, but I know in the past, uh, one of the past ships we were on, service dogs were allowed, and I did see a handful of them. But um, where the heck do they go to the bathroom, though? That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. I think they have specialized rooms for them and they have little like grass mat type things in the room. I don't know. I'm, I'm just guessing. Yeah. Um, but I, I remember wondering the same thing and getting the answer. But it's been a few years. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't I don't know if that's an option on this ship or for this group this year. But um, something to ask the host, the hospitality and customer service folks. Great. And so do they normally uh, email them or is there a number to call if they have these types? There's both on the website. There's the phone number and the email on the website on the contact page. Nice. Well, very good. Any more questions for Justin or about the cruise guys? There's a link to click both in the chat and the show notes if you want more information. <laughs> Make sure that if you want that discount to register before September 25th, it'll be here in no time. You expect to sell out again, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, the event sold out last year by mid to late November with 2,000 guests or close to it. So yeah, we, last I checked, the event was close to one third sold out after just two weeks. Great. All right. Well, sounds like it'll be fun. You've got a lot of new presenters and you've got some of the uh, OGs back. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Well, thanks, Justin. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And thanks for being vegan and for putting on such spectacular events or maybe not putting them on, but, you know, make a difference. Helping to spread the word. <laughs> exactly. And having the idea. I think that was great, though, that you, you, you changed the name because um, macrobiotic can be vegan, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's vegan, you know. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, now it's I, I think I think the people that want to go on it will 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 get it that it's vegan and like that word you know I I don't like the word plant based myself I just never did because that doesn't mean anything to me that you can eat fifty one percent of your calories from something like junk or animal products and be plant based but I like plant exclusive or or vegan or you know they have all these words now plant predominant plant mm -hmm. forward 
let's just call it vegan. Like it's a vegan cruise, right? Well, yeah, our, our, our meals are vegan. So it's a vegan yeah. cruise. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, if you want to, it's so nice though, how accessible the speakers are like, like Robert Cheek and Colin Campbell. I mean, they, those guys dance the night away. I don't know how they have the energy to do that, especially, you know, uh, Colin is just incredible. He's so gracious with his time and talking to people. It's almost like he never sleeps. Yeah. You know, I, I met Robert for the first time on board in 2013, yeah. I think it was 2012, something like that. Yep, that's neat. You know, it'd be cool if uh, if you had a way for us to watch some of those lectures virtually while we're on land. I I would do that for sure. Yeah, we can. We'll look into that. I don't think that the internet is going to be that at that level at this point. Um, and I'm not sure if the kind of you know the coordination would be worth the uh, the cost and, and and time it would take to do it. But it's something I've I've really thought about for a long time about when that's going to be possible, you know, but it may be someday that'll be a possibility. Because then I can host the, the, I can host the land version. The virtual uh, ride along. Absolutely. I'd be great at that. I think, you know, that would be so cool. Yeah. Maybe next time I get on board, I will, I'll do some experimentation, see what's possible. Yeah. Great. Well, thanks so much, Justin. Thank you. And thanks all of you. For watching another episode of Chef AJ Live, please come back a little bit earlier tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific time for Mark Gossman. He has a brand new food delivery service that you can get completely SOS free meals. And I'm going to be there to do a live taste test and meet a chef who's going to be cooking in my kitchen. 